Today's subject is called Enter Your Kingdom. Now I want to talk about this and then you can extract its meaning in your own time if you are ready to actually understand its message. If you're not ready, you might dismiss the claims made in this lecture, but if you are ready, you at least will contemplate it for yourself and see its wonderful truth one day unfold within the depths of your own mind. Now whatever you observe in this world can be replicated in the dimension of imagination, and whatever can be observed in the realm of imagination can be replicated in the dimension that you currently are living in when hearing this message. Now see beautiful paintings around you in the world. Now, see wonderful science fiction concepts. You can see these beautiful fairy tales written by others. Now all of them can be experienced and lived in the first person present tense. You can create a world of Halloween where the sheer thrill of the horror is yours to enjoy. But you can also create a world of peace and enjoy the serenity and bliss. It is all yours. Now how can you do it? We have to lay the foundation first. Imagination creates and influences reality. Reality we describe as the things we can experience through the senses. If I close my eyes, I can experience a world just in that manner. So are my dreams not part of so-called reality? If we call that unreal, even though we experience it, just like how we experience when we are supposedly awake, does this not imply that there is a kingdom hidden behind the obvious sensory impressions of my earthly senses? I dare say that you can enter the true kingdom of universal imagination and live like a god for a lucid dreamer can create whatever they want, so that makes them equal to a god. This might seem blasphemous, but what other sense of hope, joy and wonder can compare to this marvelous possibility? I say nothing. This whole world is dead, less and less it faces me personally. I might get disturbing news and I see others panic. Yet here I am, knowing nothing of what I am experiencing here on this little planet called Earth, is where my real kingdom lies. So why would I even remotely care? Oh, I might catch myself temporarily worrying, but I drop it as soon as possible, because it would cause me to burn in hell. Hell is meant negative states of mind. Heaven is meant as a positive state of mind. Both can be entered by us and you already have experienced it. This you can't deny. Now your kingdom lies within and it is yours for the taking. Now let me try and explain to you how I apply this revelation in my own life so that you might have the courage to test and enter your own wonderful kingdom of fulfilled desires. And put this earth in subjection of your mind. Don't let the world put your mind into subjection. Unleash your true gift which is the gift of imagination and all shall have to obey what you have imagined or leave your sight if they can't handle what you created. Don't let the outside world dissuade you from using this great power, even if they hate you for it. For it is your birthright to awaken out of this dream of life and be put back into the rightful place of being a co-creator of the spirit of the universe. Only an awakened mind can truly be active from their rightful place. Nobody who can use their imagination consciously and at will is fit for their rightful place in the universe. So here I am facing circumstances I don't like and all seems hopeless. I can't see exactly how to overcome my obstacle from this earthly angle. What must I do? I must learn to close my physical eyes and look towards my fulfilled desires with the spiritual eye of imagination. I mentally have to dare to see and look at what the solution to my problem would be and if through intense focus I start to grasp what my desire entails, I am looking into the eyes of my own salvation, the thing that can set me free from my current obstacles in life. What happens then? As I make this vision, my dear friend, it starts to inspire me with ideas and plans I should execute in order to change my physical world. And as I obey the power of imagination and say, yes, my great imagination, this I shall do and execute, the whole world shifts according to what I first imagined. Will people scoff and ridicule this claim? Of course they will. That is how it goes on earth. People can't grasp the great power of imagination hidden inside their own minds. But if you find yourself ready to work with this inner power, then you will notice your world can shift according to what you first have created inside your own mind. Through occurrence in the physical realm of life, we learn to consciously create our own circumstances. Through this method, and as the recurrence confirms that we have indeed turned our imagination into a concrete reality, we will make ourselves ready to do the same in the spiritual realms of the mind. For if we are unaware in this life, 
we are also unaware of the power of imagination in the inner world of the mind. The purpose of the physical world is to show you how imagination is creating concrete reality and by that realization make you an awakened spirit that when he or she goes to sleep can still create at will whatever they want. They can also find in this dimension the solution and meaning to all earthly problems they will ever face. One who is that intense with their imagination even when experiencing physical death can enter different dimensions at will and keep on creating. That is the true kingdom of so-called heaven. Don't take the stories of religion literally. Actually see the symbolism behind the words or else you will be led astray into a world of eternal conflict. Now that is where we find ourselves currently. A world of eternal conflict. There will never be a point in time where this whole world will know peace. For everyone has different ideas on what peace actually would mean. Only enslavement of the entire human race can create peace. But that wouldn't be true peace. Because real peace means living in the way you want and at the pace you want it to go. And that can only be had in the spiritual realms of imagination. Your kingdom awaiting your return. This is why all spiritual texts are trying to tell humanity through symbolism of words that the time for salvation is now. That the time to enter the kingdom of heaven is now. Why? Because the only time you ever have is now. So don't think it was supposed to happen thousands of years ago and now you are too late to be saved from this cycle of life and death. No, your own consciousness only knows one time and it is now. So now is the time to awaken. But tomorrow might be experienced as now. So I don't care when it happens or when you are ready. For once you are truly ready to awaken out of this dream called life, you will say to others, it is happening to me now and I can sense it. There is no past or future only the everlasting now. So what concepts are we working with? What obstacles are you facing right now in your life that seem insurmountable? Well I dare say to you again, you should stop looking at the obstacle and start looking at your savior which is the vision of fulfilled desire. For if you don't see it mentally, it can never be experienced. Let's suppose you died right now and you have no idea how to save yourself and only new obstacles. Did you know that is where you will awake? A world filled with similar obstacles. Your nightmares at night are a reflection of your own state of mind. This much humanity can agree upon. But they are unwilling to actually take charge and build wonderful mental concepts at will. So their dreams at night as their life experience can transform into something better than the obstacle that is now tying them down to this petty little realm called planet earth with all of its limitations. I call it petty for a reason, for no matter how much you achieve, how great you are in the eyes of others, it is all temporary. So what enjoyment can we have in things that will pass away as time ticks on? No real satisfaction. But how are we to find real satisfaction then? By knowing and experiencing literally that we can create and have whatever we want because its essence lies within our own imagination. If the solution to your problem can be imagined and since imagination always creates and influences reality, does that not prove your solutions are always within yourself? Don't cut open the body, you won't find it there. Open the door of your mind and close the door of the senses. This is the trick and ultimate work you are called upon to perform. For not until you do will you really understand who you are and what you are capable of doing while on this planet. Now this planet serves as a playground where we can learn to measure whether we understand how to consciously create our own circumstances. But the great mass of humanity only lives in reaction to everything around them. They are not creating. They are simply existing, never wondering what happens after death because they think this life they observe is all there is. But this is not all there is and assuming that places us at a disadvantage for all of eternity. But don't worry, one day you will see how silly it all really is and you will dare to apply your own imagination and put your own world in total subjection to it. So you see an obstacle and you dare to imagine its solution and you only focus on that vision, you only obey that solution and then as you keep it alive within your own mind, from it all sorts of inspiration and ideas and plans start to flow helping you overcome all those obstacles that seemed insurmountable. But if you can overcome them, it proves they were never insurmountable, but they seemed like it because of the perception we now hold. So we have to learn to change the way we look at our own lives so we can actually shift the whole thing. So this life you are experiencing right now is meant to show you how you can create using your own imagination. 
as you use it for little goals, you will learn to use it for bigger goals. And as you keep doing that, you will start to recognize how it all happens in your world. And that is when you will eventually wake up fully to the power of your own consciousness itself. Because that is the whole point of it all. You came out of the darkness into the light, so that you can become an actual creator, not just on earth, for it is temporary, but for eternity in a totally different dimension altogether. But you have to go through the horrors of this world, so it starts to shake you up, so to speak. So you actually start to dare to exercise your inherent power of imagination. Then you will discover imagination can set you free. And you will truly find joy beyond anything else. For you will achieve a few things here and there on earth, whatever those things are. But you are no longer hypnotized by it either. So your own happiness is not dependent on the state of your physical life at all anymore. It sounds insane at first, but that is why we are told to become detached. For as long as I am in love and fully attached to this life, I shall never escape its horrors. And I must go through it until I fall out of love with life and fall in love with the spirit of life itself, the creator of everything. Go back far enough in time and humanity has to admit they can't explain how this universe came into being at all. We have the theory of the Big Bang, that is just fine, but go even further back and we are at a loss for words. That is because humanity will never discover the real truth of their own existence from just the physical side alone. It is a combination of both physical and mental realms that will show the full picture. So here we are, very familiar with just the physical side, but are we actually aware of the mental side of it also? Now carefully observe your own life and behavior and dare to admit whether you are aware of it or not. Also look at others around you and see if they are even aware of it. And you will be disturbed to find out 90% if not more are only aware of the physical side so confusion will haunt their days for all of their days on earth until they dare to also make use of the mental realms of life. Then it sort of gets balanced out. People commit suicide because they can't handle the physical side of life. They hope to escape their own sorrow and mental pains but they won't. Oh, they will escape this current life but then they are still confronted by their own mind and realize they are still totally incapable of directing this hidden inner power of theirs. Now that we are alive in these bodies, it is our duty to learn to consciously create. Let the physical world and its obstacles be what they are. Do not be intimidated by it. And if you feel you are being intimidated, stop yourself instantly and remember the truth of your being. Your mind can never be touched by anyone or anything outside of yourself at all. Once I found myself in a different dimension and I saw a person on the ground fearing for their life. A person came and shot them in the head, killing them instantly. Then the person with the gun walked up to me and pointed it at me. I simply grabbed the gun and pointed it at my head. I did it for them. Well, they were disturbed for they could not get the same fearful reaction out of me as with the other person. For I already knew this bullet can never hit the real me. It is all an illusion. Try and shoot someone and they will occupy new bodies, but they simply seem dead to us who are left behind. That is all there is to it. Well, that is our world forever and ever. It hopefully won't try to shoot you, but it will try to impress itself on you with all of its rules and conflicts. Now face the conflicts and know that they can never touch the real you, and simply look for the solution to your problems and conjure them up from within your own mind and let them overflow into the outside world we call reality. Then you are the one creating reality instead of being hypnotized by it. Enter your kingdom of fulfilled desire by using your imagination. Then let it influence this reality and you will discover both realms are either reality in some form or both worlds are an illusion making this whole life experience completely pointless to begin with. But it had a point, which is to awaken you to this inner world which is the true reality, so you can become its rightful heir.